What's up, Doombots? Tony Scangioli with the third and final video of the War series. Final in that I won't need to go over these things anymore, but there's still going to be plenty of videos about philosophy and updates that come out. This is the concept that me, Remin, a few other players have come up with called the Sweet 16. Uh, to be fully ready for war at any level, really, it comes down to 16 teams. Eight defense teams, because that's the maximum you can have right now, wink, and eight minimum offense teams. You get 12 attacks possible in war, but you're going to at least get eight free attacks. You want to make sure you can do as much as you can with the attacks that you have. So because of that, you need to know what to do with your roster, which we've defined in the first video based on what the teams are and how strong they should be. And in the second video, we defined where the teams work best based on, you know, comparison to other teams. So this one is now, we know what the teams are, or we know what teams we should be working towards, more or less, and we have a good idea of whether they're better on offense or defense and when they're better on offense than defense comparatively. So now what do I do with them? At this point, it's simple. It's been broken down. The Sweet 16 is broken down into fours, assuming that as you grow as a player, the number of teams you'll have at about 150K or the like and ready for war will grow. Your roster at the very early game, you're probably looking to build about four teams, which we've defined right here. You know, Defenders, Guardians, Hand, Kree, War Avengers. Now, some of these you're not prioritizing, but you're probably getting a good chunk of some of them. Once you enter the mid game, you probably have a good investment in at least two of these teams. You end up with some kind of combination of Shield or Brotherhood or Sinister Six or Wakandan or Brawlers. You know, as you're building these teams out, as you're getting these teams to a certain level, as you're investing accordingly into those characters, you're now capable of placing them on offense or defense. When you look at the beginning of a stage of war, at the very beginning when you started playing, you're not going to have more than four teams. So what do I do with the first team I have? We'll say it's defenders because people are still leveling defenders early, which I advise against. If it's defenders, you can go ahead and place the defenders right here, and that's your war team. You can break it down into two teams to take out two shield minions. You could save it for an opposing defenders team that someone else has placed on defense. The, the point is you are using your teams offensively, and that's why that's got the nice number one right there. So same conversation. If you notice right here, the teams are all pretty much in order. I have a double up on Avengers and War Avengers. War Avengers is just one or two of the leftover Avengers characters, you know. It just to kind of showcase that you can change the different kinds of teams you use without necessarily worrying. It's mostly meta teams with the idea of like one random team kind of thing. So you get a second team. We'll say it's the hand. Well, hand is, according to this sheet, a little bit better on defense because it's, if you remember the video, it's not good on offense. So might as well use them on defense kind of thing. But since it's your second team, there's no reason to place it on defense. So we'll just go ahead, put the hand here, removes it from the total count of teams you can possibly have, and now you're two attacks. Once you get your third team, which we'll call it the Avengers, just for the sake of it, because you happen to cross a Quake and a Hawkeye and a Captain America, well, now you get to make a decision. Do I put the defenders on defense? Do I put the Avengers on defense or do I put the hand on defense? Because now we're entering the stage where you can officially put a team on defense without feeling like it's a bad idea. You can start contributing to the defensive side of war. Taking a quick look. Well, hand clearly better on defense. Defenders, middle ground. They're literally dead center on this flex team of offense or defense. So as of right now, they're probably going to be more reliable on offense than the hand team. If you're not specifically dis demanded by your alliance or your captains or your leader to go heavy defense, well, go ahead, put the hand team on defense, and then use the two teams that are kind of flex on offense. So we'll just go ahead and swap that, and we'll take the Avengers and put them here. Obviously, that's three teams. The fourth team, I think you can get it. It's going to look something like this. 
done. This is kind of a filled out roster showing where you might put characters as you go based on the previous sheets and when you should she should unlock them. Your defenders might not be on defense anymore after a while. Your Kree may be getting more value on offense. You may not have the Wakandans or the power armor, as you can see right here. And humans are a brand new team. But this is what a, a fully realized uh, Sweet 16 would look like. Um, you would have your definitive teams that are better on defense on defense according to this and you just check the sheet you'd go yeah no i know and you would make sure that your definitive offense teams and the teams that are slightly better on offense are on offense you just want to avoid having defense heavy teams on defense especially in war because and this is the truth and it took me a while to get there but i've said it a hundred times on stream and probably a couple times in the last videos war is not won by defense you can get 36 defensive victories and hoist your MVP trophy in the loss because not a single member of your alliance did an attack. Is that likely? No. But it's possible. And I know more than a decent number of you have definitely lost wars and told me about it because just no one's attacking or no one cares. That's the problem that needs to be addressed. Being offensive oriented will guarantee your responsibility in war is cleared. Once you can guarantee yourself eight attacks for eight wins, you are going to be producing the bare minimum number of points each player is required to full clear your opponent. That doesn't mean you're guaranteed to. It just means every single player is responsible for eight points, which is why that's the exact number of points you get in a war without buying energy. We're not going into buying energy. We're not going into any of those details or best practices in this video. Uh, we're just going to talk about how to use the teams, and I will always recommend, as you'll see here by the numbers, you always want to be almost double what your offense capabilities are compared to your defense. It kind of breaks once you enter this top 12 level. You know, first four teams, place them accordingly. Doesn't really matter who goes where. Once you get to the next, the Elite Eight, place them however you want. I'll just put some random teams in. It's not going to make too much of a difference. You know, like, play some however you want. Here, 12 is where things get a little crazy. 12 is when it's going to depend on you. Do you have enough teams that you can go 8 and 4 on defense and then just use guys I have as the rest of your defense team? Maybe. Or... Is that next team just not really worth it? Are you in a high impact room based on what your alliance is doing? And perhaps being a little bit more savvy on defense is giving you the advantage. That's that's the exact break point for this game. Once you have 12 teams, 12 of the defined teams right here, at about 150k or higher, that's when you could start being discerning. That's when you can make your decisions based on, well... I'm, I need to produce a little bit more on defense or I'm not going to be able to attack 12, you know, eight times early. I'm not going to be able to get to the early stages of war. By the time I'm in war, all of the hard fights are gone and I'm just doing cleanup, that kind of thing. That's a touch and go. So that's where you can start using your one team difference. You can either go eight and four or seven and five and call it a day. Then you can just decide everything else you want. At this point, once you've entered your Sweet 16, every team you have it's kind of placed on defense just to iron you out and making you a complete uh, player. Knowing that at any point in time, you can rip off one of your defense teams, particularly one of the defense teams that are slanted towards the aggressive side, the offensive side of this uh, flow. And, and use them on offense in case you realize that you're just not producing enough on the offensive side of war. You're losing wars because even though you guys are getting defense victories, they're outspending you. That's where you make that kind of change. At the end, you know, once you have a total of 16 teams and you're maybe a little bit higher, like we showed here, you also have power armor or the Wakandans or Inhumans. Well, that's just amazing. Because the true goal at the end of war is to have 12 teams. So you could 
theoretically go 12 for 12 in attacks if you were to buy energy or if you were to save up for one particular war and overproduce. And that's what you see a lot of the whales or a lot of the people who are just willing to spend or people who just really like war doing, getting 10, 11, 12 attacks in war. You can't do that with eight teams and then some weird stuff that you have laying around, especially as more people are going a little bit more defensive, as you say, you know, the early game of war, you got like maybe one or two teams you'll see that are threatening, but mostly it's shield characters. Some people tend to go more defensive. Now, the cost of that is if you went more offensive and they went more defensive, you will win. You have more answers to the, the questions they're asking, which is, can you beat this? If you decide to go more defensive, you need to know that the rest of your alliance, or at least one or two other people, are willing to pick up that slack. Like I said before, you will, every player is responsible for eight victories in a full clear attack. And that's where war goes to. Eventually, war you will be facing wars where you are racing your opponents to completely clear their defenses. And while that may seem like, well, the stronger the defense, the better off we're going to be, that's kind of untrue. It'll help, but if your defenses are holding, but you don't have anything in your tank to to get rooms cleared, all you've done is delay. You want to be aggressive in war. Everyone wants to be aggressive in war. When some when we faced off against alliances that went incredibly defensive in war, we didn't full clear them. We still won. We have never lost an alliance because there was a fight we could a war because there was a fight we couldn't take. We've only ever or or more than one, you know, maybe someone has a 500k team and we were just like, uh oh, we're in trouble. Even then, communication kind of helps, but I'm digressing. We we have never been in a fight where we've seen eight very strong defensive teams in war multiple times and went, uh oh, we're in trouble. Because we have enough offense on in our alliance to make sure that, okay, we'll we'll use two, you know, we'll two tap it. I'll go in with a weaker team to do as much as damage as I can and clear the boost. And you'll go in with your stronger team and finish the job. And even though it did, it wasn't efficient, we got the fight, we got the room, we got the node, we're progressing. Uh, where you don't have that option if you guys are heavy on defense. Uh, assuming all things are equal, of course. This is not assuming you're fighting somebody who is, who has you know, 8 million power to your 2 million. This is assuming you're fighting somebody that's roughly the same as you. And that's how war is divided. War is decided by the win-loss record of the previous season of players within 10% or so of your TCP, your alliance's TCP. That's not always true, but that's the, the core mechanism in which they play stuff. It does lock at the beginning of a war season, so the second you pay, get your payout from war season, whatever your alliance's TCP is, whether you make changes or not, that is what you'll be facing off against for the rest. So hopefully this is helpful. This sheet has been updated now, so you can kind of play around with this. Uh, the reason it looks like this and the reason I'm, I haven't really fine-tuned it is because I'm trying to find a way to implement this into either I am Groot's official sheet uh, or onto the, the modified version of his sheet that I use for my roster views. This way you can go ahead and make your teams the way you've seen on spreadsheets before, but uh, also use those teams in other places. So in the same way you'd put a Blitz team together that's the BKT, you'd put together a War team because you might have found out that like, I could use the CM Brawlers with Rhino to counter Brotherhood or... You know, I could put Doctor Strange on a Ultron defense team to make sure that the power armor team doesn't have death proofs. You know, like there's there's a tiny little options you can take uh, to make an exact team like we've defined over here and, and tweak them. And that's that's great and wonderful. And that's what I live for in this game. I live for these tiny little changes. I'm, I'm tired of these teams are complete, but you can't ignore the fact that teams have good synergy you have to enhance that with knowledge of the game gameplay mechanics 
So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, the next video in this series will be a, kind of a response to a bunch of questions that have been asked in the last couple of weeks regarding when do I know what time it is? How should I work on these characters? When can I start getting cute? And, but Tony, my alliance said to go defense heavy. What do I do? I want to answer all those questions. I want to make sure, and again, if you have any questions in the comments here, I'll make sure to include that. It's going to be more of a philosophy of war and how my alliance has been so successful over the last six or seven months and how I've been trying to help other alliances adopt a very similar strategy to succeed in war. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangilli, and I'll catch you later.